You know, man, shout out Swamp Stories, man. I'm tapped in, man. Let's just say I'm tapped in with a lot of niggas around this Bay Area. And, you know, uh, it be like, you know, conflicting stories, man, you know, but maybe that's a good thing. I'm going to get into this video, though. Shout out Swamp Stories, like I said, because uh, a lot of the stuff be public records, man. And maybe the public records get it wrong or whatever. I don't know, man. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to get into this. Shout out to all subscribers. Shout out to new subscribers. Uh... Yeah, man, we got another little genocide video. Hopefully, it don't get too crazy, man. I don't really want, like, hearing the stories about, like, you know, the, the details. Not not the stories, but, like, the f details. Plus, they yellow mark you on YouTube when they get into the details. You know what I'm saying? So, hopefully, man, he kept it real PG exclusive. You know what I'm saying? Me, but, or whatever they call it. But I'm going to get into the video. Welcome back to another episode of Swamp Stories. For this episode, we head back to the Bay Area. This video was requested over a thousand times. And every time I would hear, do another Oakland video, I'd be like, yo, I already did Oakland. But then I went back and watched the video and realized how much I didn't cover. I also realized how far I've come. Like, wow, that first video was low quality. So I decided that Oakland deserves another episode. But this is more than a regular episode. This video will dive deeper than any video I've ever made. You'll really get a taste of Oakland after watching this video. You'll also get to see what's behind everything you see in the news every other day. You'll see the old Oakland all the way up to the new Oakland. Let me paint the picture for you. This right here is history in the making. So let's get into the video. When people think of the Bay Area, they always think of San Francisco first. Then they think of Silicon Valley, then after that probably Napa. Well, it's pretty much always been that way, even since the days of the gold rush. When I be out and about though, uh, people do kind of like think of Frisco first, but then they do think of Oakland. They don't. It don't really. They don't really think of. You know, they like when you run into people, they be like, oh, you. It just depends on what type of person you run into. If you think about it, you know what I mean. If you run into like somebody who, you know, like a law-abiding citizen and working in this, that, and the third. They gonna probably be like, oh, you you out there by Silicon Valley, you know what I mean? Palazzo, San Mateo. But if you run into somebody who like, you know, a little bit more urban or this, that, and the third street, they gonna be like, oh, you, you out there by Frisco, Oakland. Yeah. San Francisco was always the attractive destination city. And Oakland, uh... Not so much. Oakland has always been the blue collar city, going all the way back to the 1920s. That's when Chrysler and Ford opened up factories in East Oakland, prompting Oakland to be called the Detroit of the West. Because it's always been overshadowed by San Francisco, Oakland has always had a chip on its shoulder. But more than that, it has an element of toughness and strength, and that really began in the 1960s. That's when Oakland began having a new identity, and some locals were not thrilled about it. A new era in Oakland had begun. Figures such as Huey and Bobby began their movement. This movement wouldn't last long though, and Oakland started to head down the wrong path. The 1980s brought a whole new element to the streets of Oakland. The nationwide era of, hmm, how do I say this? Rock climbing, but without the climbing? Yeah, the thing that people use to, you guys get the point. But it wasn't all bad, because this era is when Oakland's hip hop reign began. Rappers Too Short, MC Hammer, Drew Down, Shock G, and Richie Rich all came along and gave Oakland the national spotlight. They all had a unique style and represented the Bay Area to the fullest. This can be remembered as the G-Funk era, but after this, a new trend came along in Oakland. Oakland, California, man. Welcome to the Bay. <laughs> Let me introduce you to the hyphy movement. First, you're probably thinking, what is hyphy? Hyphy, to be extremely rowdy, excited, and energetic. And that perfectly describes Oakland. Extremely rowdy, hyphy, and energetic. That ain't hyphy, homie. You know what I'm saying? Me, I, uh, 
That might be, I don't know what that is. That's just a, a description of something, but that ain't what it is. The niggas was trying to like get away from that fast because you might you might be in DC somewhere and the nigga might be like, oh, y'all get hypey and might think of, you know, that it's something like that. It ain't nothing like that, you know what I mean? So like, you know, and niggas just, that I can understand niggas want to move away from like a stigma to where niggas is getting it twisted, you know what I mean? Because it's like, like, nah, that's not, you know, don't get it twisted. That's not. I'm gonna keep it lit. If you want to hear what the hyphy movement sounded like, check out Mr. Fab, Keep the Sneak, and Tracks a Million. So hopefully this gave you guys a taste of Oakland and its history and culture. But I know that's not what you came here for. So let's get into the good stuff. And as much as Oakland is a vibrant and fun city, it also has a darker side. A side that we will cover from top to bottom. But before we get into it, let me run the intro. Oakland is having its worst year since 1992. It's November, and the city has over 125 homicides. This gives it one of the top five highest rates in the country. Many Bay Area residents are wondering what in the world is going on. But here's the thing, it's really not all that complicated. They tell you everything you need to know in their music. Now, I assume that most of you aren't as bored as I am, so you probably have no interest in looking into it yourself, but me? Yeah, I took the time to put everything together. Why, might you be asking? I really don't know, it's kinda sad. But either way, I'll break it down in a simple manner for everyone to understand. Oakland pretty much has three sides. The two- I'm gonna tell you, when you say why, you, you, you ask that question, you left that question open to the viewers, they gonna say, cause you the rollers. They gonna say, cause you the police, man. They think you the police, swamp. They think you the police. I ain't gonna lie. A lot of people be getting at me, at, at me personally, like, man, thinking I made the video though. Like, when I'm, re <laughs> I'm reacting to your video, then they like, oh, they, you got the story wrong. And then, you know, my subscribers be on niggas' helmets. Like, yeah, he didn't make the video. Get it right. You know what I mean? But yeah, they, they, they think you the rollers, man. You know, so. Threes and fours. But in order for it to make sense, let's head back to the start. It all started in 2002 with a man named Leon Wiley and his friend Demarcus Rawls. Both were residents of the Acorn Apartments in West Oakland. Leon Wiley's nickname was Tweezy, and Tweezy's name was known all over Oakland, and not for good reasons. In fact, he was feared by most, if not all. Well, it all started when Tweezy fell out with a group of guys right down the street. About four blocks away from Acorn, you have Campbell Village. Acorn and Campbell were at odds over some minor disagreements. Well, Tweezy would put that issue to sleep. Literally. BAM! Due to their reputation, Tweezy started calling him and his friends the Nutcase, and then they became known as the 400, and their game plan was Shaquille O'Neal. Dominate. They were not going to let anyone get in their way. It didn't matter how old, what, where, and when. The Nutcase were going to get their way no matter what. But they quickly realized that it was hard to do it alone. They needed to add to their roster. And that's exactly what they did. They made allies with East Oakland's strongest sections. Their first addition was Boss Land. Boss stands for Birch, Olive, and Sunnyside, which are the streets they cover. But then, Nutcase added 88th shortly after, but more specifically, the Hillside Apartments. This was a new phenomenon in Oakland. It used to be that everyone had their own identity, so this teaming up stuff was brand new. And for the next eight years, Nutcase would continue expanding. They would add an area called 55th, also known as 557. They're located right up the street from Seminary. So let me break down the original Nutcase. It was Acorn in West Oakland, Boss Land, 88th, and 55th. And at this point, it was just unfair. It was like when Kevin Durant joined the Warriors, like a ridiculous all-star roster. So naturally, the rest of Oakland was like, hey, we need to team up as well, or else we will not have a chance out here. But that wouldn't <laughs> The way this nigga explained it, right? The way he tried to explain it, like the way he break down the story is cold. Like uh, the rest of Oakland, like nigga, we gotta click up too. Or what we gonna do, you know what I mean? It's crazy, like, like, I don't know, Swamp, you just be on one a little bit, but I'ma keep it lit, you know what I'm saying? You a funny nigga, though. 
start happening until November 6, 2010. That's the day that two 18-year-olds, Ed Hampton and Nario Jackson, are sitting in their car in West Oakland. That's when Nicholas Harris pulls up and BAM! So that's when West Oakland's ghost town decided that enough is enough. They would band together with the rest of West Oakland, except for Acorn, of course. And together, they would call themselves ENT, Ed Nario Team. They would also adopt the nickname Stubby and the number 300. So let me clarify again. 400 is Nutcase and 300 is Stubby ENT. So Stubby would continue to expand as well, as they needed stronghold. Damn, he threw a stealer. He threw a stealer. Uh, man, you know it's crazy? He crazy. He just throwing niggas in the video. He don't even know if, if they retired. If they, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause this this video old right here for me. I went to school with this nigga, so I don't, you you know what I'm saying? Like maybe you don't know what this nigga doing. You don't, you know what I mean? I ain't spoke to him in a while, but I'm just saying like, come on, man. You crazy swamp. To the east to match the case expansion. So this was the start of 300 versus 400. So let's get into it. Well, the new generation of Case would face internal affairs before anything. April 21st, 2012. A group of teens are hanging out at the park on 77th. That's when Shantae Daniels gets into a disagreement with his close friend. Bam! January 7th, 2013. Tyrante Mickens would be sitting in his car on 77th and Hamilton. Bam! This right here would be a huge loss for Case. You hear them talk about him all the time, still to this day. Well, they would pop out a few months later and in a major way. June 27th, 2013. This is the recount of a woman named Michelle Nelson, as she told OPD back in 2014. Stubby's William Ward, also known as Weeze, was living on 84th at the time, and that's where he and other Stubby would hang out. Well, on June 27th, he would be outside with a group of friends. Well, Michelle notices that his friends vanish off behind him, and Weeze would be standing out there alone for a few seconds. That's when a blue car pulls up, and BAM! The Aftermath this is when things get interesting. A friend of William Ward would say that a girl called him right after and told him that it was a man named Demonte Stark. All right, see, if you want to see the rest of the video, man, I ain't gonna react to the whole thing. It's another like couple, couple minutes, you know, like I don't know. You feel me? It's a couple like seven minutes or something left. Left, you know. You want to see it? Go to Swamp Story page and watch the rest of it. I meant to cut it off before the genocide started. I ain't gonna lie. He snuck it on me, you know what I mean? But, uh, you know, it's a cold game when you're making these videos about people who still out and about. You know, maybe they was gangbanging at a point in time. Not gangbanging, but, yeah, man. Niggas might have changed their life, though, man. And you still, you know, throw them in the video. You know what I'm saying? It's like a, uh, you know, you remind me of a little bit? Like DJ Academics with the, with the Chicago and this, that, and the third. But y'all niggas let me know what y'all think about this video, man. Uh, I don't give a fuck, Keisha. Fake ass. Motherfuckers be showing all that fake ass love. Keep that shit away from me. Keep that fake ass shit away from me, nigga. Before I explode on one of you bitch ass niggas, nigga. Say ho, say ho, you can't play with that paper, ho. Nigga need 